put them in the back seat. Oh, just, I'll just hit the mail. It's 6 o'clock. Meeting is called to order. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Our first order of business, as always, is to approve minutes of previous meetings, and we will start with the June 14 public hearing concerning the Community Development Block Grant. We have got a quorum of members who were present at that meeting. So that, as you look at it, um, Charlie, you and Dick were there at that meeting with me. Yes. So. I move we approve the minutes as written. Second. It's been moved by Charlie, seconded by Dick. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those minutes are approved. I will abstain since I was not there. As will I. Good. Next we have the minutes of the August 13, 2012 work session. I would move to approve those. Second. It's been moved by Mike and seconded by Ray. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, those minutes are approved. And finally, the August 13, 2012 regular meeting. I make a motion to approve. I'll second that one. It's been moved by Dick and seconded by Mike. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Those minutes are approved. Announcements. The select board will meet on the following dates. Regular meetings at 6 p.m. on September 10, 2012 and September 24, 2012. Work review sessions prior to the regular meeting will start at 5 p.m. All of these meetings will be held in the town hall unless otherwise posted. And citizens wishing to be listed on the selectmen's agenda should notify the town hall before 12 p.m. on the Friday before the scheduled meeting. Okay, first item on our agenda is an addition under updates. We have Kate Lowe from our assessing department. Kate. Good morning. This is going to be a quick update. Um, I just wanted to make, I, kn I know that everybody here knows that each year a quarter of the town is reviewed, the information on the property record cards. Um, and this is our fourth year that we were in, and we have just completed that. And we now have all of our values um, in the assessing program. And I ran the summary of inventory evaluation, otherwise known as the MS1, which is what we use um, to set our tax rate. Last year, we were at $446 million in assessed value. This year we are at 445 million. Um, so we've gone down a little bit. And I don't know if, did you want to talk about the, for how much it takes for the tax rate? It's theoretically, that brings us about even. Uh, last year it took 446,000 to go up a dollar or down a dollar in your tax rate. This year it'll be 445000 to go up a dollar or down a dollar in the tax rate. So essentially if the budget was to go up $222,000 or down by that dollar amount, it would be 50 cents taken off the tax rate. So it's, a, it's not a significant dollar amount. Well, there were some pilot programs that kicked in this year and that was the drop. Everything else basically stood about the same. So we're not going down. And Anymore, really. There was a pilot program. That what was the pilot program? Oh, there was one with Spear. Oh, oh the point. Okay. 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 taxes. And also, um, now that we've completed the fourth year, the fifth year is a reval, uh, revaluation of the whole town as a whole. Um, right now, we are just over 113 uh, percent ratio, which. Um, is this what the sales is the sales value versus the um, assessed value 
and we're supposed to be within 10%, 10% of 100% either side. Um, so when, once the redial is completed, we should be back at 100%. And I think that's pretty much it. Oh, I also, George Sansusi, I know that you've seen the giant poles that have been going up around town because they came in after April 1st of this year. Um, we haven't been able to include them in our valuation, but they should be picked up for the next year. So that will be helpful to the tax base too. So I think that's it for now. <laughs> What, what about abatement? So is, is the abatement on the rise or pretty much the same? Pretty much the same, I have to say, right now. Um, once we get through the reval, then we can discuss that. So it's been fairly stable. It's been already. pretty steady. Um, What's the dollar value, roughly? That I cannot. I, I, I don't know right at the moment. I'd have to go down and check it out with Linda because Linda's got the dollar total. So all the current use properties are about the same. Uh, the intent to cut, those are coming in the same. We get about ten yeah. to $15,000 in intent to cut mm -hmm. uh, permits. So that's, that's fairly steady. No, and that's it's no longer declining. So that's good news. So for, for the first time going into a new fiscal year, it's, this is the brightest that it's looked in the last three years. So we're finally stabling ourselves up and finished fairly well Good. this past year. Is the, just on, on the telephone, or on the utility poles, is, so there's what added value because it's a bigger pole or more equipment on the poles or? Bigger pole, more, yes. Okay, okay. So there should be, I mean, certainly the, the, the larger size is going to be, you know, an increase. Um, but that won't be until next year. Yeah. So but then we'll, we'll also lose income or lose the tax payments on the poles that get removed once yeah, they get that it, finished. But it's. Yeah. It, it'll be an increase, though. It'll be an increase. Ones. It'll overall. be a net increase. I don't, it's not, we're not going to double right. what we right. currently get. So yeah. I don't know how significant that increase will be. Okay. okay. Thank you, Kate. Okay. Next. On the agenda, we have a letter received regarding parking at 149 Main Street. Um, this letter is from Mark Scarano, Executive Director of the Grafton County Eco Economic Development Council, and it is addressed to the town administrator. And he, he has been asked to share it with the select board. Dear Mr. Freitas, thank you for taking the time a while ago to discuss the issue of parking for tenants within the future Enterprise Center of, at Plymouth Business Incubator. As noted, the par project is a partnership between the Grafton County Economic Development Council and Plymouth State University. The mission of the Enterprise Center is to create assistance programs and leased space for growing entrepreneurial companies. When these companies become financially viable, the partners will relocate or graduate them out of the facility. This will create a constant turnover of established companies leaving and newer ones taking their place. Business incubators are a smart tool for creating jobs and municipal revenues. According to the National Business Incubation Association, business incubation programs produce graduate firms with high survival rates. A reported 87% of all graduates are still in business. Most firms that graduate from business incubators remain in their local communities, an average of 84%. You'll be pleased to note that the GCEDC has recently purchased 149 Main Street, a vacant one-story building in downtown Plymouth, with plans to make it the headquarters of the Enterprise Center Incubator. Because of its blighted condition and smaller size, the GCEDC has successfully raised $1.5 million to redevelop this property into, new multi, into a new multi-story showcase center for entrepreneurial activity. Indeed, the strategic location of 149 Main Street makes it one of the first buildings in Plymouth you see when crossing the Desenzo Memorial Bridge from Holderness. We take seriously this highly visible location and aim to create an outstanding building that residents will be proud of. 
It should be noted also that the GCEDC intends to pay full property taxes on this new building, increasing the amount of revenues generated at the site significantly. Furthermore, as noted in the above NBIA statistics, entrepreneurial companies that graduate from the Enterprise Center will usually re relocate nearby, thereby increasing municipal property taxes and new employment opportunities for residents. We are keenly aware, however, that the issue of parking needs to be addressed for those working at the Enterprise Center. While this is not a new challenge for anyone working in a college <coughs> town like Plymouth, we are hopeful that the municipality will work with us to proactively identify dedicated parking spaces for our temporary tenants. Considering the improvement of a highly visible but blighted downtown property and the enhancement of future municipal revenues obtained by graduating companies, we know that a win-win situation for parking can be developed. As always, should you have any questions about the Enterprise Center at Plymouth, please feel free to contact me anytime. We look forward to partnering with you on this exciting economic development project. And the board did take the opportunity to discuss the parking situation um, at a work session and our recommendation to Mr. Scarano was, is that given that the business incubator is a partnership between the Grafton County Economic Development Council and Plymouth State University that they should explore the possibility of using the parking that Plymouth State has near their athletic facilities and possibly sharing with the PSU shuttle to get employees of businesses at the incubator to 149 Main Street. And beyond that, that anybody visiting those businesses and, and patronizing those businesses while they're in the incubator could pay for parking at Green Street like customers and clients of all of the other downtown businesses do. So that was our resolution on that request. Our agenda was to include introduction, introduction of our new police officers, but they are at the police academy and were unable to get away to join us this evening, so that will be postponed. Um, next on our agenda is committee reports. Charlie? I have nothing. Um, brief report, I did attend last week the uh, meeting of the Plymouth Elementary School Board, and there were um, comprehensive reports on the operations that have ensued over the summer by both the principal and the vice principal, covering a, a wide range of subjects, everything from anticipated class sizes, um, that they believe they're going to have this September, um, and the impacts that, um, uh, it was interesting for me to hear that um, some of the uh, variations that occur from the, in the, within the age groups of the students attending the elementary school have on the impacts, excuse me, impacting the, the makeup of various athletic programs. Um, case in point, uh, just one example that, would, that was discussed about how to try to move forward was the idea of um, changing the makeup of the, uh, the girls' um, soccer team. Um, just the one particular age group, they're having trouble just because of the numbers of students that are attending in that age group. Um, there also um, was introduced by Mark Halloran the memorandum of understanding that was developed with our police chief between the uh, school and the police department to uh, handle any type of incident that arises at the school. And um, there was a number of good compliments that were paid to our police department about the work that has already gone into not only that memorandum, but previous events that have occurred at the school and the way our police department has always addressed those in a very professional and timely manner. Um, they do meet again in um, September um, and October and hope to have some additional reports. It'd be interesting to share what this makeup actually turns out to be with the various student population. I don't have anything to report. Okay. Nothing new? Okay, uh, I also have nothing new. Moving on to other business, we have a proposal from an appointment of Donna Lane from CDGB consult the CDGB consultant as grant administrator for the Whippoorwill Feasibility Study CDGB project. <coughs> Paul? <coughs> Donna had already come before you on yep. behalf of Whippoorwill, and that's the grant writer that they have chosen to use, and the board has to 
vote to confirm the fact that Donnelly will be used to facilitate that grant. Is there any any other just requires a vote. Work. It just yeah, requires a motion right to right appoint now. her. I will make the motion to appoint uh, Donna Lane as the grant administrator for the Whippoorwill Feasibility Study Project. Second. It has been moved by Mike, seconded by Dick. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 She is appointed. Okay, do we have any public comment this evening? The public is silent. In that case, I would request a motion to go into a non-public... Well, I do have, Did you have two, two things. Uh, town offices will be closed Monday, uh, September 3rd. And during that day, uh, student move-in, Tim, yes. on Monday. So High Street to Langdon Street will be one way. For that we to, to facilitate the moving in of the students. We did vote to approve that at our last meeting, and that letter from um, Chief Doyle was read. So that's, thank you. That's a good reminder that Monday will be move-in day in Plymouth. That's it. OK. And now I would request a motion that we go into a non-public session in accordance with RSA 91-A colon 3 comma 2 A through C. I'll make that motion. Uh, Charlie did. Second. All right. It's been moved by Charlie and seconded by Mike. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Non-public. <laughs> 